Well, with that, let's move on to our first corporate conversation on uh, Bazaar this morning. Home First Finance reported a strong set of numbers for the second quarter with robust business momentum. The company saw uh, its disbursements surge uh, as well as assets under management uh, seeing a healthy jump. Manoj Vishwanathan, <clears throat> Managing Director uh, and Chief Executive Officer at Home First Finance is with us. Uh, Manoj, good morning. Thank you very much for taking the call. I actually want to start with this really strong business momentum that you have uh, showcased. I think if I look at it quarter on quarter, then the growth is 7.5%. Whether you look at disbursements or AUM growth, and year on year, these numbers are showcasing growth of about 35% or 33%, depending on which metric you're looking at. The question is, how sustainable is this? How confident are you of driving this growth forward into the rest of the year? Uh, we, are, we have been uh, looking at a 30% growth for this year, and uh, we are uh, currently tracking through that. Um, so we are, uh, and uh, if we see the activity on the ground, the demand, uh, you know, from customers who are building affordable housing, uh, it's uh, it's fairly strong. Um, so even for the next two quarters, uh, we are looking at a similar kind of growth, and uh, we are overall looking at a 30% growth for the uh, for the for this year. Okay, all right. Mr. Vishwanathan, uh, good morning. Uh, you'd said that uh, you you expect to do this 30, 35% growth for a number of years from here, right? I mean, so that remains. Uh, on 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 track, I'm just kind of that's extending right. what you said. Uh, you'll do this. That's right. Uh, so yeah, last well. uh, last uh, I mean, for yeah. since the last three years, we have been saying that we'll grow at about 30 percent. We have uh, sustained that till now. Uh, at least our outlook, outlook as of now, looking at the activity on the ground, uh, it's uh, you know we are confident that uh, we can maintain the space for the uh, next couple of years. Yeah. Just just one question, and we'll get into the numbers in just a bit. Uh, there has been, you know, the, the premium end of the market is where uh, we all focus on generally. The affordable segment has kind of dropped off the radar uh, for the last, uh, actually, many years now. But, of course, there is a demand, as we can see in your numbers and other, uh, other uh, financiers' numbers as well. Uh, is help required in that segment uh, from, from the government? Do you think it's, it's, going to, it's chugging along nicely on the affordable side? Uh uh, it is chugging along nicely, and the government have also has been helping. And the uh, you know the Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana did a lot to uh, provide a thrust in the segment, um, and um, so that uh, you know that scheme was on for about five years, and uh, that really gave a lot of thrust in the segment. Um, and um, um, so um, I think uh, you know the uh, you know uh, various schemes for uh, boosting up manufacturing are also helping because uh, this is a segment that is actually very dependent on uh, employment. Um, so as employment gets generated uh, either through directly uh, through manufacturing or through, or indirectly through ancillary units, etc., uh, uh, that that definitely uh, you know gives a boost to the segment. All right, uh, hi, Mr. Vishwanathan. Good morning, and congratulations on a good showing. You're targeting an AB, AUM growth of around 30 percent. Tell us about the lap book. You know that's I think around 12 percent of the mix. I think you were that's indicating right. you want to take it to mid teens. By when does it go? I think to around 15 percent or point number one. And point number two on the NIMS. You know, the cost of borrowing has been moving up. Do you think it's peaked out now? So what should the trajectory be in terms of NIMS? LAP and NIMS. Go ahead, please. Sure. Um, so on LAP, uh, we are currently clocking about 15% uh, when you look at our dispersal rate. Um, so on the dispersal of 959 crores, uh, we have booked LAP of about 15%. Um, so that uh, catch-up on the AUM will also happen. So currently we are at about 12% of the AUM. So that is going to catch up to 15% probably in a few quarters. Um, so that's on the lap. And uh, as far as NIMS are concerned, um, um, yes, uh, we feel that interest rates, uh, uh, at, at least uh, for, the, for now, have uh, kind of uh, you know, flattened out. And uh, so we should be able to sustain the NIMS uh, going forward. Uh, but if there is any spike in the interest rates, uh, you know, we will have to see uh, you know, uh, that there could be some reduction in the NIMS. Uh, so but as of now, I think the feeling is that, uh, yeah. Hold around 6%. That's right. So, uh, if, I mean, if there is no major in increase in interest rates, we should be able to sustain them at about 6%. 6% would be the level to watch them. Got that. Uh, let's just talk about asset quality. That was the only slight, you know, you know, niggling worry in uh, this quarter's print, if I can call it that. Uh, the GNPA level has risen to about 1.7%. Uh, what are the trends that you're forecasting and how are your buffers looking like? Um, the um, asset quality we are fairly uh, confident of uh, because uh, if you look at our uh, early uh, delinquencies, if you look at the 30-day past due, that is stable. Uh, it's the same as last quarter, 2.9%. Um, yes, there has been a 10 basis points increase in GNPA, but um, you know, in the first half of the year, there's generally a little bit of a, a spike in the delinquency numbers, and uh, which generally comes down in the second half. 
Uh, that's generally been the trend, uh, you know, even prior to COVID. So uh, we are uh, absolutely not worried at all. And if you see our um, uh, bounce rates, uh, they've actually come down this quarter. Mm. Uh, Mr. Vishwan, another final question before we let you go. AUM growth is going to be good. NIMS is going to be holding strong as well. So AUM, I mean, all probability will be more than, what, 10, 12, 15,000 crores in the coming years. You know, investors will be quite excited, but uh, the street fears about supply pressure. Mm. Uh, have you heard any kind of communication from the promoter entity, that's the PE, or from Warburg that had a big stake? They have trimmed off stake, both these two. So any further supply pressure are you expecting or any kind of communication? No, we have a, a very good understanding with the uh, uh, promoters and the investors uh, that we will uh, do, uh, you know, very careful structured exit, you know, in the coming years. Uh, so what we are looking at is maybe a one transaction per year, uh, you know, and that's that's what we have agreed. So there will be a very structured exit. Uh, there will be no, you know, regular supply in the market. Okay. All right. Uh, fair enough. Uh, good to hear that, Mr. Vishwanathan. Appreciate you joining in and uh, thank you for your time uh, here on CNBC TV. Thank good you luck. Very much.